Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I'm give all praises, all honor, and all glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Hashem, Mashiach, Yamashah. I'm going over a quick lesson today over how to increase your faith and, you know, the necessary ways you can increase your faith. Um, like I said, it's going to be a very quick lesson. First precept I want to get is Romans 13. Romans 13 and verse 12. It says, um, I'm going to start 11. Start 11. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than we believe. It says, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. So we see the times approaching, approaching and salvation is very nice. Salvation is very close. You know, World War III finna crack off. All hell is breaking loose. Everything is going down the drain. America, Babylon the Great is going down the drain, which that aligns with our salvation. You know, the fall of Egypt, we just got done with Passover, the fall of Egypt aligned with Israel's salvation. The fall of Babylon and spiritual Egypt aligns with us receiving salvation. What is salvation according to the Bible? This is a classic Luke 1 and uh, 68. Blessed is the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. He hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant uh, David, which is uh, Yahweh Shah. That's the horn of our salvation. Verse 70. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. So, the time is not where our salvation is near. And what is required of us, we must have faith. We got to have faith to get saved out of this thing. You know, um, the scripture is going to say in 2nd Ezra, 2nd Ezra 15, verse 4, it says, For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. All the unfaithful are going to die in their faithfulness. No matter how many uh, 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 law, statement, and commandments you keep, you will perish here in America. You will perish here in Babylon if you are unfaithful. All of that will come to naught. All your works will not be remembered because you didn't have faith. You lack faith. Second Ezra 9 and 9 and 7. And everyone that shall be saved shall be able to escape by his works, which is keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, and by faith whereby ye have believed it was always those two things you know everybody loves to speak about the law which i get i love to talk about the law as well but faith is in the law you have to keep faith you have to keep the law you got to keep all of it it's the perfect balance revelations 14 and uh 12 here's the patience of the of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of god and the faith of yahweh mashiach so you got to be able to have both. You can't just, um, you know, well, I don't, I'm only a faith guy. You know, I don't, I eat pork. Uh, I, you know, I eat pork. I don't got to wear fringes. I don't got to do this. I don't got to do that. I'm good, though, because I have faith. No, that's not how it works. That is not how it works. Let me grab a couple precepts on that real quick, and then we can go into increasing your faith. Romans 2 and 13, for not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. You're going to be justified and condemned by the law, statute, your commandments and your faith. Uh, Romans 2 and 31, do we then make void the law through faith? Do we then disannul? The most high God's law through faith. God forbid, yea, we establish the law. God forbid we keep the law, statutes, and commandments. One may argue, one may like to go to Matthew 5 and argue Christ fulfilled the law, but they don't have understanding. You know, I guess I'm gonna give y'all a quick breakdown on this Matthew 5 and 17. Um, Matthew 5 and 17, think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets, I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. 
It says, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. He goes on to say, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called the great in the kingdom of heaven. So, you know, we don't make void the law through faith. We have to keep the law, study, commandments, and that's from Christ's words. Um, he said, think not that I have come to destroy the law, but to fulfill. A lot of Christians would like to use that and take that and run with that and say Christ fulfilled the law, so I don't have to keep the law. That's not what that's going into. I'm going to show you what he fulfilled. Acts 3 and 18. But those things which God hath before showed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. The Deuteronomy 18 and uh, 18, I believe, or Deuteronomy 18 and 8, where it says that uh, I shall send a prophet like unto yourself when he was talking to Moses. Christ came and fulfilled that. And Isaiah, um, Isaiah spoke of Christ a lot. He came to fulfill a lot of those things that uh, Isaiah has spoke of. I mean, chiefly, what, uh, when he had to suffer, Isaiah 53. If you go into the whole Isaiah 53, you'll read and you'll see that this is talking about Christ. The whole Isaiah chapter 53 is going into Christ. It says he was, um, Slovakia, is Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 4. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. This whole chapter is going over Christ, and Christ had to come and fulfill that. That's what Matthew 5 and 17 is going into. I went through all of that. I went through all of that to say, um, not to say, but, well, yeah, to say you got to keep faith and the law of commandments. There is no disannulment of any one of them. You just, we, we got to keep it. Uh, 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 Even in the new covenant, we're going to keep the law, statute, and commandments. We're going to have faith. But let me get to the point because I was going to touch on something else. But let me just get to the point because I didn't want this to be a long, a long lesson. This is Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. Here's the point. Romans 10 and 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You have to get into the law, statutes, and commandments. You have to get into the book of the law. You got to get into the scriptures. Chiefly, that's what it's saying. You have to understand the testimonies. You got to learn the accounts. You got to learn what's going on. That's how you build your faith. You read about these accounts where other men built their faith. And, you, and, 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 and that should increase your faith. That should, uh, let me grab this precept. Let me see if I can remember it off the dome real quick. Should be in Romans. I think I know where it's at. Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15, verse four. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, or were written aforetime, were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. The things that were written aforetime were written for our learning and for our comfort that we might have hope. We see our forefathers getting saved through, uh, through them having faith. We see our people getting saved through them having faith. And them keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, and the Most High God, um, the Most High God dealing with them, you know, just dealing with them on that level. This is Sirach two and ten. Look at the generations of old and see did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded, or did any abide in His fear and was forsaken, or whom did He ever despise that called upon Him? We got to look at the generations of old. We have to look into the Word of God. We have to see, we have to look into the scriptures, look into the Bible, get in the Bible, actually get a, 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 a understanding on what's going on. I know a lot of people don't like to read 
um, Chronicles, Kings, Samuel. I know a lot of people don't like to read those history books. If you get into those books, there's a ton of faith boosters. Your faith will increase exponentially if you get into Samuel, first, second Samuel, first, second Kings, first and second Chronicles. You got to get into those things. Those are accounts of our forefathers. Those are the accounts of the generations of old. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I was going to go. Oh yeah, I was going to go to the law. I was going to go to the law. This is Deuteronomy chapter six and verse. I like to start at verse four. You don't got to start at verse four, but I like to start at verse four. Deuteronomy six and four. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Here's the point. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. What is that going into? That's going into you should be meditating on the law, statutes, and commandments all the day long. And not strictly just on the laws, but, but on the book, in the scriptures. Meditating in the scriptures all the day long. Chiefly, you want to be in the laws. But everything is going to go back to the law anyway. Everything is going to go back to the law. Verse uh, verse 8. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be frontless between thy eyes. Now, you may see the Jewish man um, going over phylacteries. If anybody know about uh, Deacon Sakara, you can go watch his video. He did a video over... Uh, phylacteries they took this as carnal basically they took they tied the laws around the hand got a box on their head no that's not what this is going into this is actually spiritual you shall bind them for a sign upon thy hand so like you bind them for a sign upon thy hand meaning the things you do um you're going to act out the law statute commandments you're going to show that you keep the law statute commandments by your actions it's what your hand represents it says and they shall be frontless between thine eyes what is that going into that's the, that's the first thing in your mind. That's the forefront of your mind. That's the thing that's supposed to always be in your mind. Law, statute, commandments. The most I got. You know? And, and the reason why we just say law, statute, commandments. Because those things end up being love God, love thy neighbor. All of those things go together to love God, love your neighbor. You know? Let me grab a quick, quick precept to prove that. This is Romans chapter 13 and verse 9. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's love, keeping the laws as your commandments. When you go to the ten, to the ten commandments, you got a certain amount of laws dealing with the Most High God. You got a certain amount of laws dealing with your neighbor. Everything, the whole, the whole so-called 613 law statute commandments comprise into love God, love thy neighbor. That's what it is. You're supposed to keep those. We're supposed to keep those. We're supposed to act those out. And that should be on the forefront of your mind. Let me grab a... Where do I want to go? Where do I want to go? Where do I want to go? Let me grab Cyrac. Let me grab Cyrac or Ecclesiasticus. Before I grab that, before I grab that, let me, I, I made a statement. This is 2 John 1 and verse 6. 2 John 1 verse 6. Chapter 1 verse 6. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. This is the commandment that ye had heard from the beginning. Going into the law, statute, commandments. That's love. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Um, Sirach 39 and verse 1. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. He will keep the sayings of renowned men and where subtle parables are he will also be there or he will be there also he will seek out the secrets of grave sentences and be conversant in dark parables you know and that's what it's all about being occupied in the meditation of the law statute commandments why 
and 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 Salakia. Not even just that, but when I say law, study commandments, I'm kind of meaning, kind of meaning the whole Bible. I'm kind of the whole Bible isn't the law, study commandments, but I only say that because we know that there's wisdom in the whole Bible, which leads the the uh, Captain Bar is like to say. It. He says, uh, um, wisdom is the performance of the law. I believe. Let me see if I can grab that without just without just uh, quoting it. Um, Sirach 1920. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom. And in all wisdom is the performance of the law and the knowledge of his omnipotency. So this whole Bible is dealing with wisdom. And when you go into that and you actually see it, you understand it, it's going to go back to the law, statutes, and commandments. So you want to be meditating on this book. That's how you're going to increase your faith. You know, how are you going to increase your faith if you've never seen someone have faith get saved? Um, when I say saved, I'm not talking about receive salvation as of the kingdom of heaven yet. But I'm talking about, um, I'm talking about people like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I'm talking about people like David. I'm talking about people like, um, 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 um Daniel, you know, I get in a couple of counts. Everybody should know him, uh, right now. Not right now. Everybody should know him, but I get into it just in case you don't know him. Let me grab this quick precept. This is Revelations 1 and 3. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. So blessed is the man that readeth, and keep the things that are written therein. You got to keep it. And I said I get a couple of counts of men having faith. Men having faith. You can even find women in the scriptures having faith, you know. That's that's definitely in the scriptures. For some reason, I wanted to get. Nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just grab this. I'm gonna just grab this. I'm gonna just grab this. Let me see if I can find it. This is Daniel, Daniel chapter three. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give y'all a little bit of a summary. If you heard an assortment of music in the land of Babylon and you didn't fall down and worship the image that Nebuchadnezzar has set up, the punishment would be you would be put to death. Now, Daniel three and 15, now if, now if you be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, sultry, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image that I have made, or which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? So Nebuchadnezzar is kind of boasting. He's kind of making a boast of himself saying who is who is God is who is that God which is going to deliver you out of my hands you know because Nebuchadnezzar he's not a wise man uh verse 16 Shadrach Meshach and Abednego answered and said unto the king oh Nebuchadnezzar we are not careful to answer thee in this matter so a lot of times a lot of people would be like they like to say we should we have to be careful with what we say our next word we have to choose our next words wisely they're not in that kind of spirit right now we're not careful to answer thee um verse 17 it says if it be so our god whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thy hand o king but if not be it known to thee o king that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and his form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they that the heat should 
that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was want to be heated so basically he's like turn the fire up turn it up more like seven times more type deal and he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and they cast him into the burning fiery furnace then these men were bound in their coats their hosen and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace therefore because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace succeeding hot the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So the men that bound Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and threw them in the fire, the flame had killed them. But what happened to the what happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? It says, um, let's see, verse 23. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, or astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Do we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, O true, it's like it. They said and answered unto the king, True, O king. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the burning fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fire furnace and spake. And says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out. Verse 27, And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was the hair of their head singed, neither was their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. So when you go deeper into this account, when you go into the prayer of the uh, three holy children, it goes over what happened in the midst of the fire. It's, it goes over and says um, that the fire had became a cool mist. You know, it became a cool mist. And and, and it was no, the, the like you said, the fire had no power over Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Why? Because they served the Most High God and they actually put their 100% faith in the Most High God. Um, let me grab a precept because it says lo we see four men walking in the um, in the dam uh, in the fire I got one precept in my head, but I don't know if that's going. I don't know if that's going over that. Let me see. Bear with me. Bear with me. All right, let me see if this precept one is what I'm looking for then. Alright, time. This is this is a good one. This is the letter of Jeremiah or Baruch chapter four, verse. I mean, chapter one, verse four. Letter of Jeremiah chapter one, verse four, or Baruch chapter four, verse four. It says, "Now shall ye see in Babylon gods of silver and of gold and of wood, borne upon shoulders, which cause the nations to fear." It says, Beware, therefore, that ye in no wise be like to strangers, neither be ye and of them. It's like it. Beware, therefore, that ye in no wise be like to strangers, neither be ye and of them, when ye see the multitude before them and behind them worshiping them. So don't be like the other nations worshiping the gods of silver, gold, and wood. And when you go to Babylon, 
It says, but say ye in your hearts, O Lord, we must worship thee. And this is exactly what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. Verse 7, for my angel is with you, and I myself caring for your soul. So you honestly, you have to wholeheartedly put your trust in the Most High God and honestly believe, wholeheartedly believe that the angel of the Lord is with you. In any, no matter, no matter the situation, whether good or bad, the angel of the Lord is with you. The Most High God is with you, and you have to understand that. One of my favorite, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is one of my favorite um, faith boosting, faith boosting uh, 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 stories. There are many more in the Bible. That's just one of my favorite though, because they were wholeheartedly set on Nah, nigga, we're gonna be delivered. We're gonna be saved. Like, nigga, we're not playing. We're going to be saved. Our God is able to deliver us, and our God will deliver us from your hand. Even if not, we're not going to worship your gods. Point blank, period. This is Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, one of my favorite precepts. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. So, no matter the situation, no matter if anything happened, no matter, if your damn dog died, that was for your good. If your wife leave you, that was for your good. If you truly love God, that was for your good. If you mess around, slip, hit your head on something, if you truly love God, that was for your good. No matter the outcome, it was for your good. That's what the scriptures say. Um, Let me go to Hebrews 11. If you want to learn more about some faith, Hebrews 11 is the perfect place to go to learn about faith. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. By it our forefathers obtained a good report. It says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. It says, um, by faith, Abel, uh, I want to grab something more. I want to grab something. That's a good one, but let me see. Verse 7, by faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became the heir of the righteous, which is by faith. It says he was, uh, he moved with faith and warned of God of things not seen what are the things that were not seen if you understand if you understand um the flood happened with a whole bunch of water and with rain and showers and all kinds of stuff what's the thing that wasn't seen though this is genesis 2 and verse 5 in every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every green herb so like in every herb of the field before it grew the lord god had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground. So during the time of Noah, it was no rain during that time. Noah's out there telling people, look, the Most High God is going to make it rain. Water is going to fall, fall from the heavens. And this place is going to flood. And people out there, mind you, this is when people were living 400 plus years. They're out there like, nigga, my forefathers ain't seen no rain. I've been on this earth for 300, 400 years and I've not seen rain. Leave me alone. This is how they looking at Noah. Leave me alone. They probably laughing at him. They probably shaming him, shaming his family. But guess what? Only Noah and his family was made uh, made it out of that. That's why it says by Hebrews, I'm back at Hebrews 11 and 7. Um, by faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, which is rain, Moved with fear because he actually believed the Most High God. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world. Became the heir of righteousness, which is by faith. His faith was accounted for righteousness. Um, I'm gonna jump down. H Hebrews 11 and 24. By faith, Moses, when he was yet like it, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Moses knew what was going on. By faith, he understood what was going on. 
and, and, and he got out of, he got out of that jam man he got out of that jam all these things are happening by faith one uh, one thing I want to grab Hebrews 11 and 6 it says but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder a rewarder of them that diligently seek him it's impossible to please the most high God without faith you actually have to wholeheartedly believe that he is real he is who he say he is his name is Yahweh, he who exists or the existing one you got to believe that um let's see let me see if I can grab this precept Boom, 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 boom. Matthew 19 and 26. It says, But Yahweh shall beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. With the Most High God, all things are possible. Never had that in your imagination. No, we can't do this, or the Most High God is not going to deliver me out of this situation. No. Don't get, don't fall into a, a lack of faith. Get into the scriptures, get into these stories, and understand these stories. I'm not saying you got to understand these parables. I'm not saying you got to understand um, um, the whole book of Daniel, the whole book of Ezekiel. I'm not sitting here. I'm not telling you that you have to go into Revelation and break everything down line upon line. No, get into the accounts. Remember the accounts, and those are going to be your faith boosters in this end time. I'm going to grab Romans again. Romans 10 and 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And with that, I'm going to give all praises, all honor, and all glory to the most high God. Yahweh, my sin, my shock, Yahweh, shock.